there got to be a better way than this. Very nice. <laughs> Okay, so now that you know everything about the actual purchase of a cast iron skillet and what you should and should not look for, right? Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. What you should look for. Um, now let's move on to the actual seasoning and uh, how you go about doing that. My friend Gloria lent me this one. Uh, this is an old one from her grandmother. It's a generic, um, I believe it's going to be a Griswold, but I don't know. Collectors would be able to tell you, but uh, it's a it's a generic one, but it's really good We got that nice smooth surface that we're looking for really nice and smooth and by the way I have tried this old skillet right here. I Can flip eggs on it and that's that's the ultimate test The thing you need to do is you need to learn how to cook in your cast iron if it gets too hot and you're cooking pork chops in there Guess what? You're going to get that stuff of you know, that part of the pork chop that gets burnt in there and seared into the pan. You're going to have to scrape that out. And that's fine and dandy. That's part of it. Don't expect everything to slip right off of this no matter what you do. All right? If you cook it at too hot of a temperature or too, you put the eggs in too early before your pan has heated up properly. All right? If you want to learn how to flip eggs, click this link. All right? But the thing is, is they're not exactly completely, completely nonstick. So, now that you know that, um, the methods of doing it, there's a lot of different things. A lot of people like the old traditional way and they use nothing but lard. Um, another one, a really a common one, uh, probably the most common, is people use Crisco or vegetable shortening. And the reason it's so common is because it only takes two or three coats and you've got a nice black finish. Um, so it's nice black, shiny cast iron. So it's really pretty. Another one is a lot of vegans and uh, uh, people who are really concerned about animal fats and things. Um, they'll use coconut oil. Works pretty good. Um, but, you know, the whole reason for changing things up is either A, you're concerned with the actual product and what you digest, you know, and eat and ingest. Right? Uh, or B, you're actually concerned with the strength of, uh, of the seasoning. Because what you're doing is you're literally building up, time and time again, a film on your cast iron. So this film, if it's soft, like Crisco tends to be, right? if it's soft, then you, whenever you cook, it'll peel off easier. Whenever you use your fork to stir gravy or something, you'll be scraping off little pieces of it. So you want a good hard coating. So let's talk about my method of seasoning cast iron. What I like to use is uh, flaxseed oil. But before we do that, we first got to clean this skillet, all right? Because it's filthy. There's a couple different ways to clean it. Uh, number one way is to put it in your oven and turn your oven on um, uh, the cleaning mode. It has a self-cleaning. Right? All it is is the self-cleaning is it allows the oven to get up to around 700 degrees Fahrenheit and it burns everything in there off. So we're going to put it right in. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this opportunity to as well go ahead and clean up this uh, chef skillet that I just polished up nicely. I'm going to clean off the outside whenever I put it in the oven here so that I can season it the way that I want it. All we do is we put it in the oven. We have our pipe that leads straight to our uh, overhead vent or our exhaust fan. Now you don't have to have this, but I'd much rather hear this than this. So, doing this really helps out. We just take our oven, and I've got a couple different clean modes on mine. I've got a quick clean. So it's gonna run for two hours and 30 minutes. We start it, boom, it locks the door, gets it up to temp, burns everything off. 
Now there's going to be little dry flaky stuff all over. So make sure to be really careful. You don't want that stuff spilling all over the place. But you're also not going to do anything right away. So we're going to let these cool down and then we'll come back to them. Okay, once you've got them somewhat cool, right? We're going to start off with hot water so that we can break the pan in slowly. So you see the pan's still hot. I just couldn't wait any longer. Now we use the water to slowly cool it down. Now I scrub it with the SOS. Once you've got it about as clean as you're going to be able to get it, we dry it off. Now we're going to take this and we're going to put it back into the oven at 200 degrees. I'll clean up the other pans, do the exact same thing with them. The reason we put it back into the oven at 200 degrees is we want to make sure and get it completely, completely dry before we start our seasoning process. Okay, so we got them all cleaned up and they're in the oven drying off and everything. They should be good enough to temp about 200 degrees each of them. And what I'm going to do, I've got three different skillets here that I'm seasoning. So I'm going to use three different methods. For the, uh, for the big skillet, that's actually for a friend of mine, I'm going to be using the flax flaxseed oil. Now, when you're getting the flaxseed oil, make sure you do not get the flaxseed oil that has uh, actual flax seeds in it. You want nothing but the pure flax oil. Don't get any seeds, all right? Because that's going to make it grainy. You're going to have a terrible experience with it. And I will say this about the flaxseed oil is it's not real smooth. Um, it's the toughest and strongest uh, coating that you can do that's food grade anyways. Uh, however, you've got to be really good at it. Right? So it might be best if you're doing this for your first time to use Crisco or lard. It's a little bit easier. Right? Um, but this has a tendency to get kind of spotty on your skillet. The key to, to, um, the key to stopping that is going to be while it's still in the oven before it's completely done taking it back out and wiping it again you'll see for my um for the little uh hot plate thing the uh, griddle i'm going to be using crisco and then for the chef skillet that i'm really turning out to be extremely happy with i'll be using real lard so that's how it's going to work let's get started Now when seasoning your skillet, one of your best friends are these blue paper towels, mechanics towels. They work tremendously well. I definitely recommend that being the only thing that you use uh, whenever you're actually putting on the oils and stuff. Now you want to make sure at first, whenever you're coating this, go ahead and do it heavy, especially on this back side here, so that you can get down in all the little nooks and crannies. That's going to be really important. Now once you've got it nice and coated, we wipe it off with a dry towel. 
I know what you're thinking. Well, I just put it on there. Why am I wiping it off? Well, if you get it on there thick, there see, there is no way to speed up this process. If you put it on thick, you're going to have very bad results. It's not going to harden like you want it to, and you're going to be left with a really thick, sticky seasoning. Exactly the opposite of what you want. All right, this one's ready to go into the oven. Now, when you put it in the oven, you want to go upside down because upside down it has a tendency to help um, the oh it's hot it has a tendency to help the seasoning spread better if it's upside down uh, as well as if it's going to collect in any area it's going to be around the edges which is going to drip off hopefully um, so there's one first coat is always going to be real thick because it's going to really absorb it. We take and we turn our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we set a timer for about an hour and 15 minutes. Now the worst thing about the flaxseed oil by far is the way it smells whenever it's being seasoned. If you don't have good ventilation, be prepared to have watery eyes, it'll make you cry. It's quite terrible, honestly. Uh, Crisco is not so bad and lard isn't so bad either. Lard just kind of stinks. Um, but the flaxseed oil really, well, it's quite nasty whenever you're seasoning with it. So like I told you before, I already showed you here my little setup. I go ahead and I make sure and I have this pipe. It leads directly to the exhaust fan and we turn the exhaust fan, put it on medium, maybe even high if it starts getting nasty in here because you want that stuff out. So in uh, about 20 minutes of cooking we're going to pull the the skillet out with the flaxseed oil and re-wipe it so that it doesn't um, beat up we want it to spread. Okay, so it's been heating up for, I don't know, about 15 minutes. So the pan should be nice and hot, and that flaxseed oil, or any of it, will have weeped out just a little bit more. We're going to get that off. Okay guys, so there you have it. It's a long drawn out process, but it's worth doing right. These steps that I've shown you, you want to repeat them again and again and again and again. Now what you've seen me doing is just one seasoning layer. I actually went back and with each one of those pans put six layers, at least on the outside. My large one I only put two on the inside of that. Because I like for its taste, uh, the cat, whenever I'm using lard, I'm actually looking for the cast iron to leach into my food the taste and everything so it's a little bit different the flax seeds a good all-purpose um, uh, seasoning that's really tough I use it for like this right here it's a little fryer pot that I've got I'm cooking soups and stews things like that I want it really well protected uh, the Crisco works fine too but um, whatever method you choose just understand that it's going to take time to perfect it even though you're watching all my steps it takes a while and there's no rushing the process. You have to put on the, the oil and then wipe it off with a dry towel. Uh, get it good and dry, then put it in the oven, bake it at 400 for about an hour and 15 minutes, and then do it again and again and again. Like I say, each one of my layers, or each one of my skillets, I've got about six layers of seasoning on them. So be in there, uh, you know, be ready for uh, a lot of work. It takes usually about two or three days for me to finish one. So, I hope that this was helpful for you, and until next time, you're welcome. <laughs>